I would say the difference between velocity and speed is speed is just when you're going. So everything has like a speed, but velocity is the actual increase in speed. The difference between speed and velocity, I think the best way I could put that in terms you would understand would be speed is awesome, Rose Wack. Velocity, not awesome, Wally. So when you think of speed and velocity, think of speed, awesome, Rose Wack. Velocity, not awesome, Wally. Okay. Speed and velocity seem similar to me, but I think, if I remember back to physics days, that speed has something to do more with time, and velocity might have something to do with measuring how far. Um, I would say that the speed is how fast something is going, and the velocity is the force that makes it go faster. So, the difference between velocity and speed. Um, speed is how quickly you get from one point to another uh, and velocity is something to do with gravity so speed is time and velocity is maybe energy or, or something like that speed and velocity are kind of the same thing they relate to each other and they're kind of interchangeable well what the question the difference between speed and velocity I honestly am not quite sure. I know that there's a difference between them, but I use them interchangeably and I'm not sure. Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this lesson we'll learn about displacement and velocity. Now before we get started on displacement and velocity, uh, I, I need to point out a a uh, little concept called frame of reference. Okay? Now, frame of reference um, means whatever is moving or whatever the subject is, that is what we keep in mind whenever we're talking about something. For example, if you are driving and you are the driver, your frame of reference is inside that car. But let's say you have your friend who's on the outside looking at you drive the car. The frame of reference is your friend looking at you driving the car. Now, um, this picture right here shows exactly how frame of reference can change things. Here we have um, a train that is currently going at a very fast speed and someone actually took a picture of half what half of the picture is inside the train, half of the picture is zooming by. Now, if you are inside the train, Technically, you know that you are moving, but then at the same time, it doesn't really feel like you're moving uh, compared to if you were to look outside and everything on the outside is moving really fast next to you. Now, here's a strange thought to think about. Let's say that you are inside of a car and you're driving and you see a fly um, fly by. Now, if you're driving at 50 miles per hour, the fly inside of your car is also moving at 50 miles per hour. Think about that for a little bit. Now, from the other videos, um, we can say that distance is a scalar quantity, and it tells you only the magnitude. Remember, scalar means that there's only a number. Um, there is no direction involved with distance. Displacement, on the other hand, um, has both magnitude and a direction. Okay, and a quick reminder: displacement is the shortest distance between the start and the finish. For example, in this little graphic here, uh, if you were to go from the start and you go along the black line right here, you make a left, and you make another left, and you make another left, and eventually you get to a stop. Uh, we can calculate the distance. The displacement, however, will be much shorter because instead of making all those lefts, uh, we can just go in a straight line, go from start to stop, and that is your displacement. Now, copy this definition down. Speed is the distance traveled by a moving object over a period of time. That right there gives you the equation for speed. Speed is the distance over time.
Now here in this uh, little picture we have Einstein holding up a sign saying the speed limit is C. C being of course the speed of light which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Alright, now we have a concept here called constant speed. Now for a little bit we're only going to focus on objects moving at a constant speed. Um, that is an object that's in, that doesn't accelerate, it doesn't speed up, it doesn't slow down, it keeps on going at a constant speed. For example, if your car constantly drove at 30 miles per hour, that would be its constant speed. Now with constant speed, we can easily figure out the distance that it can travel in a certain amount of time because it's, it's predictable, it's, it's constant, it doesn't change. Now in order to calculate speed, um, remember the equation I told you earlier, speed is equal to distance over time. Notice how I'm saying distance and not displacement. So a quick little problem here, if we have a runner and they travel in 100 meters in 10 seconds pretty fast, what was his average speed? Well, we can solve that by putting the 100 meters in the distance and 10 seconds in the slot for time. And then we uh, plug it into our calculators where we solve it using our brains and think, let's see, 100 divided by 10, which is equal to 10. Now, of course, if you were to say that that would be completely wrong, means you need the units. The units for speed is meters per second, unless told otherwise. Now, we can, of course, rearrange this equation to find the distance. For example, if we multiply both sides by time, we will get distance is equal to speed times time. Now, there will be um, other videos showing you exactly how to do that. We can also rearrange it so that we move time over where speed is and we flip speed to where time is to get a new equation. Time is equal to distance over speed. Now take this time right now to write down the speed equation, the distance equation, and the time equation. Now here we have a cheetah. The cheetah is the fastest land animal. The fastest animal overall is actually a bird called a swift. Um, velocity is different from speed. Velocity is speed in a given direction. All right. Now, if you remember from the scalar and vector videos, you'll know that vectors has a magnitude and direction. So that means the velocity is a vector. And the equation for average velocity is given with this equation right here. Average velocity is equal to displacement over time. Okay? I would say there's no difference between 6 meters per second or negative 6 meters per second. So which is faster, 6 meters per second or negative 6 meters per second? For this, I'm going to again use myself and Mr. Wally as the example. Six meters per second is faster because that's how fast I can run. Whereas negative six meters per second would be like Mr. Wally's car. Very slow, out of date. Technically, I think they're both the same and you're trying to trick me. Uh, they're just going in different directions. So the negative would be going in reverse, but you're still going at the same speed. I think six meters per second is faster. Uh, I would say six meters per second is, I'm going to go with equivalent to negative six meters per second because it's distance over time. And if it's the same, it should be the you know, math where you get the two lines, the absolute value, I imagine they're the same. Well, it's the same thing because you know, it doesn't really matter. You're going either forward or you're going backward, or you're up, or you're going down. That's the same thing. They're both the same. Negative 6 meters per second just means you're moving backwards. 6 meters per second just means you're moving forwards. Or negative 6 meters per second means you're moving down, and 6 meters per second means that you're moving up. So technically, they're both the same speed. So if we take a look here, average velocity is equal to displacement over a certain amount of time. 
Now, there's this thing called instantaneous velocity. This is, uh, think of it like this. If you were to film a 100 meter dash, like a race, a 100 meter dash, and in the middle of it, let's say at the uh, 55 meter mark, you were to pause the video. At that moment, we could actually calculate exactly how fast the sprinter is going. And that's instantaneous. In a moment of time, how fast something is going. Okay. Now, if you, let's say we have a average velocity for a trip might be fifty three miles per hour. Okay, um, this doesn't exactly equate to instantaneous speed because let's say that you were at a red light or a stop sign at that moment you shouldn't be moving, which I actually found out that rolling stops are illegal. They're not actually, like, you, you can't actually get pulled over for it. And at that moment, if you were to be a law-abiding citizen and actually stop at a stop sign, your instantaneous speed will be zero. But let's say you're back on the highway, and then uh, your speed can be 70 miles per hour when you're actually on the highway, and then we could average the two out to get around 53 miles per hour for your entire trip. Okay, so instantaneous speed is not the same as the average velocity. Average velocity is how fast you went throughout the entire trip. Instantaneous speed is how fast you're going in a certain moment. So ladies and gentlemen, to answer the question, what is the difference, if any, between speed and velocity? The correct answer, or what you should have gotten out of this little presentation, is that speed is a scalar and velocity is a vector. Velocity has a direction. For example, you can say that you're going 55 miles per hour, which would be your speed, or you can say I'm going 55 miles per hour west, and that will be my velocity. And to say the difference between 6 meters per second and negative 6 meters per second, there is no difference. The two are the same. Six meters per second just means that you are either going forward, you're going to the right. And negative six meters per second just means that you're going to the left or you're moving backwards.